Well, this is going to be the first part of a multiple part series uh, that has to do with problems that are perceived in the press, the media, by pundits and so on and so forth. And uh, really, uh, a good place to start, as any, is with the Depression. FDR, of course, tried to do, uh, tried to uh, create certain incentive programs, certain uh, controls and things which the U.S. Supreme Court said, no, you can't do this. While at the same time, the Republican Party said, you don't have to do these things anyway because it's just a business cycle and the economy will pick up and all of these things aren't necessary. Well, um, both of them were wrong uh, because the only thing that solve the problem as they perceived it was military spending, was rearmament. This is pertinent in two regards. The first uh, has to do with what both factions uh, are complaining about and what they perceive as the problem. They perceive the problem to be we have to create jobs. The Republicans' version of that is we don't do anything. The business cycle takes care of it. Uh, we lower everyone's taxes. We cut government regulations and uh, just let the free market do its own thing, and that's it. Uh, one of the problems that is perceived by the people today, I think, is that they don't see that the Democrats are doing anything different. Uh, the president says, well, we want to keep the safety net, which was essentially the same thing that Ronald Reagan said in the 1980s. But they also see that the government spent this incredible amount of money bailing out what appears to be the status quo economy. And essentially what they're attempting to do now is get that status quo economy going again. The way I see it, and maybe some of the people see it this way, uh, is that that kind of economy is inadequate. And it is, in fact, inadequate. The, the irrefutable proof of that is by business itself. Essentially what business is saying, if in fact they are demanding these various tax cuts, is that business, the cost of doing business is too much. Because if business was as a miraculous, holy, sacred thing as people purport it to be, then they would be able to overcome these various uh, problems that they perceive are created by the government. In part, they are created by the government. But you can't really blame one party or the other for these things. The various tax schedules that were redone during the Reagan administration, for instance, uh, serves as a perfect example of the distinction between what I refer to as socialism, a government for people, and what we have now, this capitalist consumerism, which is a government for business. Now, if you take a, a tax schedule and you have depreciation uh, of, say, five years or three years or something, essentially what you're saying is that the equipment that is absolutely necessary 
to do business is going to be written off. In other words, if a person makes enough money in that period of time to cover this expense, they'll be able to write it off. You know, and if they can't, they'll have carry forwards and things. But at, at the same time, there are also private restrictions and regulations that institutions impose upon business. For instance, uh, well, if, you don't, if we don't see that you're going to turn a profit in three years, uh, we don't know if we're willing to extend this sort of credit to you. Uh, so you have this sort of competition between the federal government, the state governments, and the private sector. And it's all for business. It has nothing to do with individuals. If uh, individuals get a job from it in order to survive, then fine. But nobody really gives a shit about the people. They care about business. They admit that the cost of doing business is too much, and they want the government to help them in some way. Well, what do they do about people? Where is the proof that the cost of living is too much? The proof of that is that beyond sustenance, beyond subsistence, people, ordinary people, cannot live without debt which is really an innovation. It's a modern development. Uh, credit cards and things like that are, are something that's rather new. But all of these things that the government does, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, welfare, it's all for business. People, people in government don't give a shit whether people are starving or not. They're worried about some guy that's an unsuccessful store owner. We got to bail him out. We got to bail out business. That's what the United States has been since the Depression. It never got out of it. The only thing that the Republicans are willing to do in terms of demand is war spending. I think one of the things that the United States government is going to have to do, putting all of these political factionalisms aside, is they're going to have to look at some different way of seeing and perceiving these problems. Because this form of uh, economics that developed during the Depression, um, I can't, I can't remember the term for it, but, you know, gross domestic product, gross national product, uh, all that it is essentially is they're saying a quantity of goods and services times price equals growth. And the growth rate is measured in that manner. Well, if you, if you stop and think about this, um, there's two ways you could do it. You could increase the quantity of things with uh, either the same price or a lesser price. But if you have a lesser price, then you have a price recession. And if the prices go below the ability for people in debt as a consequence of their cost of doing business, then it's a depression. But if, if you're able to increase the price of things, Regardless of whether you increase the quantity of them, you're still going to have a higher growth rate. And again, the other side of that problem is, is that if you have a, a very large economy like you have now, $14 trillion of, of public credit, which is kind of a misnomer, but it isn't really because people hold it and the government is paying their obligations on it, as it compared to $1 trillion, when Reagan was president, uh, then uh, an increase that's even dramatically larger than, a, than the increases that occurred when Reagan was president, where everybody was like, oh, it's voting in America, uh, is, is, going to be, is going to appear to be rather small. And in fact, it's not going to be enough to cover people's debt expenses. So 
the government is going to have to finally face what they were supposed to face after World War II, but because, because the conservatives would not allow the government to pound their swords into plowshares, which was the purpose of the United Nations, uh, they're, they're going to have to face it now. And the reason that they didn't want to face this at that period of time was because of the costs of it. And I'm, I'm probably going to have to, I'm running out of time here, I'm probably going to have to address this in another part. So I'm just going to cut it short right now.